Hey everybody, Merry Christmas. It's Mike and Julie from Adventures Over 60. In the fall, we got to go up to Munson, Maine and put our feet on the Appalachian Trail for several miles. But one of our favorite parts of that long weekend was to interview Poet. He and his wife, Hippie Chick, owned Shaw's Hiker Hostel, one of the most famous on the AT. It's been a hiker run for over 40 years. Hippie Chick was out making shuttle runs, so we didn't get to talk with her, but Poet gave us a beautiful story of how they came together and hiked and how they came to own the um, hostel. I apologize in advance for the way that the camera turns. I wasn't able to edit that out. So we hope you enjoy it. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, and we'll see you out on the trail. So this is Poet Hi, from Shaw's. Hiker Hostel in Munson, Maine. Yeah. And we just want to know your story, how you came to be through hikers, how you came to own this, and uh, whatever else you want to tell us. Yeah, yeah. Um, so pretty much it starts with uh, me having a neighbor as a kid who hiked the Appalachian Trail. And uh, we followed him uh, on a map, you know, and uh, I was really good friends with his son. And uh, I was always intrigued by the fact that he had actually stayed out there, I think he did it in four months, which is, yeah, he's pretty, he's yeah. a pretty fast guy. He had to get back, you know, he only had a certain amount of time. He went southbound. And um, fast forward to me working for him, he was a construction guy. I was helping him build the dock. And uh, I was gonna ask uh, Hippie Chick to marry me or Kim. And uh, I, I, we were gonna be up around North Carolina and I was like, hey, do you know any, uh, you know, any good spots where I can pop the question. And he said, oh yeah, there's a beautiful place there. It was near Waynesville, it's called Max Patch. <laughs> and I was like, all right, cool. I said, uh, you know, uh, that's perfect. It's right down the road. You know, I looked it up on the map and I, uh, so I, 1999, I asked Tippy Chick to marry me on Max Patch before we ever even thought about hiking the trail. Then during our wedding, Greg, my neighbor, the guy who hiked, uh, AKA Swamp Angel, met old man, or Paul, which is Kim's stepdad, and uh, basically encouraged him to hike the trail. Paul was talking to him, he's like, I'd really like to do that. Now, the interesting thing about Paul is he uh, he's a Vietnam vet. He stepped on a landmine in Vietnam, partly, uh, you know, definitely messed his leg up, and he had to have it reconstructed. So, in a way, I think uh, the challenge was intriguing to him as well. You know, like, right. you know, I'm gonna do this. You know, I, I, it's almost the thought that you might not be able to makes you wanna do it more. And he, um, so he went to hike it, and the first year, he uh, broke his leg in the smoke. He's broke his ankle, but there was like a, uh, at the VA hospital there in Johnson City, there was a world-renowned orthopedic surgeon who fixed his foot even better than it was before. Mm -hmm. And then um, he went back out the next year, finished his through hike. And when they got to Maine, uh, there was a hostel there for sale, the AT Lodge, and uh, they um, decided they wanted to buy that, and the AT uh, Cafe. Well, then Hippie Chick was like, hey, maybe I'd like to do the Appalachian Trail. And I'm like, I've always wanted to do the right, Appalachian right. Trail. So we hiked it. And uh, we had had a couple of setbacks on starting a family, which I think made it kind of like where we did want to have a dream that we had a little more control over as well. So that was another thing that kind of encouraged us to uh, just say, you know what, let's go do something for mm -hmm. ourselves. And um, we, uh, we hiked in 2008. We started on April 7th. We finished on October 12th. Uh, we had the best time of our life. It was lovely. And uh, we got to hike up and see her parents there in Millinocket. And then I taught high school before this. So, you know, went back to teaching high school afterwards. And then they were down for Thanksgiving one year and uh, they were talking about Shaw's being for sale. And we were like, Shaw's? That's like, this place is epic, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Everybody knows about Shaw's. You yeah. know, we heard about the breakfast ever since we were down in Georgia. And uh, they're like, yeah, yeah. and. Uh, we were, they were like, the price isn't bad. We we're like, uh, are you guys going to do it? And they're like, I don't know. Well, we were thinking about it. So they were really wanting to, they were considering buying it and partnering with somebody. But um, then after I listened for a while, I was like, hey, do you think they would sell it to us for that price? You know, and he was like, I, I have no idea. You know, he, and that we basically went on a long walk and uh, we had a two year old daughter and I was 13 years into a teaching career which I feel like was getting close to halfway to retirement, you know, and, uh, you know, we like, you know, we just didn't know what to think about this. And at the end of the walk, we, uh, 
we basically figured that, um, I think we both concluded that if we didn't give this a shot, we'd spend the rest of our life wondering what it might have been like. And uh, I don't want to be in a situation like that. Right. So here we are. <laughs> wow. That is a great story. Yeah. That is a great story. So what year did you take ownership? 2015. 15? Yep. Okay. Yeah, this will be our seventh. We just finished our seventh season. And how's it been? Lovely. We love it. Yeah. yeah. This has been the craziest year of all. Um, Combination of 2020 and 21 yeah, hikers. This is when we doubled up this year. Yeah. You know, I mean, last year was the easiest year we ever had. Yeah. And, uh, but, uh, you know, we did, you know, we took a hit, you know. Right. So this year, I think it made up for that. Mm -hmm. so hopefully next year. Next it'll, year. Hopefully it'll balance out. We'll yeah. Do. I think, yeah, I, I've been telling people, I think that uh, this year was the mania that was the response to last year's depression. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, things hopefully will start falling back into the new normal or falling into a new normal. Right. Yeah. Know, that's not so hysterical. Yeah. <laughs> what would you say is your season? Like when do you generally start? When do you generally finish? We start at the end of uh, May. Um, what is that? Labor Day, right? Memorial, Memorial Day. Day. Yeah. Yep. I yep. Can't Memorial Day. And then um, and then we go to the end of October, October 30th. And, okay. you know, we don't. We kind of let the season, the hiker season, open us up and close us down. We don't like to turn people away. So by the time October 30th rolls around, there's nobody. Right. You know, and that makes it feel okay to close the doors, you know. And, uh, you know, the, south, the mountain doesn't open until sometime in the beginning of June, sometimes the first of June. So that puts the first southbounders coming through, you know, around uh, June 10th to June 15th or so. So we don't really, we're not really hopping until mid-June. But we open at the end of May mm -hmm. uh, for the, there's people who want to section hike. Mm -hmm. They come out before the bugs come. You know, it's still a little wet in the first 15, and there might be a little snow on top of white cap, but it's not dangerous, so they come out and hike around that time. Cool, mm -hmm. okay. Can you tell us what, what your daily like, your daily life is like? Yeah. Your routine? I mean, yeah. It's, we uh, hear about your breakfast. Yeah, that's definitely a part of it. So I'm usually up around uh, 5.50. Well, I'm in the kitchen at 5.45. Get the coffee going, mm -hmm. you know, get breakfast started. And um, the smell is, you know, something that a lot of hikers know about or remember because that smell starts coming in around 6, you know, and uh, it's the alarm clock here. Everybody <laughs> smells it and they're like up and moving. And uh, the, I call the coffee, you know. Coffee opens things up, and then the potatoes are like the base, and so you bring in the strings with the bacon. It's I call it the old factory orchestra. Yeah. But um, they uh, so then seven o'clock we're cooking breakfast. Um, I guess the average number for breakfast would probably be about twenty-five people, but this year we had a whole week where we had over fifty, which was tough. But where do you seat them? You do site you cycle, you know. Get started early when group yeah, goes in. Keep moving. Yeah, keep them yeah. moving, keep okay. changing the plates. Have extra plates or wash some plates and so on. And then um, as soon as breakfast is over, which I like it to be over around just, you know, somewhere between 7.30 and 7.45, like it's prompt, you know, where, you know, if you wander in at 7.45, you're probably not going to get breakfast. So, yeah. you know, we're, and I'm usually starting to serve around about 6.50 to 6.55. I like to get an early start. So, and then um, the, uh, we go down here to the gear shop, which opens at eight or sometimes earlier, and Hippie Chick will be settling up with people and we'll help get the food drops together and answer questions, put new pole tips on people's poles before they head out, you know, get the last minute things. And then I'm running the shuttles to the uh, trailhead between 8.15 and 8.30. And uh, usually we'll load that van up, which holds nine people two or three times, you know, and get everybody back to the trail, do a little spiel on the way and, uh, get them hiking and uh then after that get back over here and with the southbound season i do a lot of shakedowns so uh right. hikers will come in and i um go over their packs with them and help them drop some weight get rid of some stuff change out a few of their base weight pieces so they can drop their their overall base mm -hmm. weight show them how to pack their pack which is a big deal you know kind of helps out and then uh you know just answer general questions and do a it's like the I guess the earlier part of the season is where the teacher I get to do the teacher thing. Yeah. You know, the part where you're teaching and then the second half of the season I get to do the teacher thing, the part where you're like, Hey, don't do that <laughs> But uh right. no, uh the um so they uh 
Then uh, we got shuttles all day, so sometimes I'll be out on a shuttle. We got got we got three to four shuttle vehicles, depending on they're all running, and uh, we uh, we shuttle almost all day long with all the vehicles. We got people coming and going. We go all the way down to Gorham, all the way up to uh, Baxter, you know. And then um, wow. we do shut down in the middle of the day from uh, 11 to, uh, to uh, what is it, 11 to 2 or something like that. Give ourselves a nice break. Yeah. And usually that's so we can go over and fold laundry and fold towels and get the laundry going and get, or get, make sure all the beds are taken care of and uh, clean the toilets or bathrooms. Then after that, we'll start back up in the gear shop again, and that runs all the way to five. But in the, I mean, when it's during the summer, it usually runs to more like seven o'clock. We usually find ourselves out here sipping on wine and telling yeah. stories or going over things, bringing people up just to, you know, it's, but it's, you're living it. You know, it's not a, it's not work when you're having a good time. You're yeah. just kind of hanging out with people you like. And do you then, have a, uh, I'm sorry, do you have a staff? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you'd, you'd have to yeah, just yeah. to run the shuttles. Yeah, yeah, we got it. So we have people who come in and volunteer, you know, um, uh, they call it work for stay. Yep. You know, mm -hmm. and they um, will have maybe one or two, maybe sometimes three people who want to do that for a week or two. And then we have people who stay on for like maybe a couple of months that we uh, pay, um, you know, just kind of get them to know the ropes and their responsibilities increase as a result. You know, they just, you, you can't help but have that. Right. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, but you got to have, geez, I mean, with the shuttle drivers, you know, we pay, you know, we, we try to find shuttle drivers locally if we can, because right. uh, on the shuttles we do, you know, like a third of the shuttle goes to the driver and the third goes to the house and a third goes to the vehicle, which the roads up here absolutely destroy the vehicles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you guys probably know. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, and then we start all over again, close down and, uh, a lot of times we'll go over to the hostel at the end of the evening and they'll have the instruments and I'll be playing some nice music or whatever and then we'll go to uh then we'll go to uh, bed and start it over it's groundhog day you know yeah. <laughs> yeah so you must have had some memorable uh hikers this year yeah there's been some good ones yeah i mean we follow some of them on youtube oh yeah yeah you got do you know of any by name uh yeah the suttons Oh yeah, of course. Oh yeah, for sure. With the little man being the youngest. Yeah, yeah. We started watching um, Taylor in New Hampshire hike. Oh yeah, yeah. She, she would be earlier. Yeah, she was. She was like 121 days. Yeah, what a great person. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't get to meet the Suttons as much as Hippie Chick did. I was gone. My uh, had to go down to Florida this year. It's been a, it's been an interesting. One. My mom passed away this year, so I had to be down. Oh, there for very days. sorry. Yeah, and it's, it was. She had Parkinson's and she was having a hard time with it, so it was kind of oh. a bit of a blessing. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so I missed them. But they played with Finn. And, uh, yeah. They had Legos and they had a good right. time. Yeah. But I met them out in the wilderness for a minute. They were really nice people. On, on one of your drops. Yep. Yeah. Nimble yeah. Nomad. He uh, he came through uh, this year. He's um, finishing up the uh, to be the. Uh, oldest person to have completed a through hike. Okay, I think yeah. we we followed him when he was talking with the Suttons. I think yeah. we, we noticed yeah. him. Because it yeah. was going to be the oldest guy and the right. youngest guy. Right, yeah. yeah, that's very cool. Yeah. yeah. We followed uh, several others, but those those two those in particular. Two Years ago, Dixie, Homemade oh, yeah. Wonderloss, came through, yeah. so we follow her as well. Nice. But yeah, yeah. Tell us about the drops, because it looks like you're oh, yeah. constantly yeah we do those every Making. day uh, to the point where we're probably well, i'm doing them right now but we'll probably get somebody to just go out into the wilderness and hang out during the day and go back and forth and do food drops all day um you know some uh, some people um some businesses do the drops where they cache the food in the woods yeah. um and some you know we've decided to do it where we personally hand it off it takes a little bit more time and i rest easier knowing that the food is always with us and then you know human hands that, or the hands of the humans you want it to be in the hands of. And um, the, uh, so the driver will go with usually some supplies too, like uh, Luco tape, band-aids, you know, stuff that when people, so if people come along and they need something, we can help them out. So it's like a mobile hiker service in the middle of the wilderness, nice, which can be very nice. useful. Nice, Yeah, and uh, we, we put the, the hikers put the buckets together before they leave. Um, we, uh, we take them out there. We take the trash, we give them their food, 
We bring out mm. cold drinks to uh, brighten the day a little bit. Nice. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a great service. And uh, yeah, people huge. Really like it. I mean, it cuts back on uh, about, I don't know, close to somewhere between uh, six to 10 pounds, depending on how much you eat, of pack weight going northbound over the chair backs, which is not the easiest section to name. Yeah. Know? Yeah. So, yeah, it's helpful. Around what mile would that be where, where you can make the drop? We do it at uh, mile 53, which is Johnson Pond Road on Gut Hook, okay. uh, right by Crawford Pond. There's a couple of different names for that road. And then we do them at Joe Mary Road, which is 60 miles in. Okay. And the seven miles in between the two drops is uh, some of the easiest, the cruisiest mileage in Maine. I mean, it's just smooth. So, you know, we'll, uh, we let people know that, but you know, if a person, you know, was going to finish up that day at Crawford Pond, then it's nice to not have to carry an extra meal yeah. so they can put that meal in their drop rather than have to carry an extra meal. So yeah. it just depends on how they work it out. Sure. Yeah, and we also do food drop at uh, KI Road, which is 30 miles out. So for people who are uh, coming out to section hike the wilderness and don't have the legs of a northbounder, that's a good option to uh, do uh, 30 miles, do a food drop at 30 miles. Then do a food drop in 60 miles. So you do, uh, you know, and do the wilderness in about 10 days. You know, you got three days to KI Road, three days to Joe Mary Road, and then uh, three or four days out to uh, Abal Bridge right. over the uh, more mellow terrain. Yeah, yeah, okay. Well, we definitely plan on a food drop next year. Ah, that's a good <laughs> idea. I mean, we didn't do one when we threw hike. They didn't know there was an option, and I don't think many people were doing it back then. Um, my parents sent me a box that we, uh, that we got at the post office. We didn't even stay in months and we were, we summoned on October 12th. So we were kind of like getting a little antsy and yeah. back in those days, they did shut down the mountain on the uh, 15th. Yeah. So, uh, my pack was atrocious. So I was so heavy.